Hey everybody, this is Swapnil Mathur for ThinkDigit.com and I am going to be serving up the review for the Nikon DF. Now, this is somewhat of a bittersweet little camera because, you know, we know that the retro style has been doing really well thanks to Fujifilm who kind of brought the rangefinder design back and then, you know, uh, other camera companies just kind of started jumping on the bandwagon. Olympus was probably the first to go all retro. So, while that was all limited to the mirrorless segment, Nikon's been the first one to take the step in the DSLR market. So that's why we have the Nikon DF. Now, as you can see, it has a giant uh, bulge on the top, like the old FM2, FM3 cameras. Unfortunately, there's no. This is not a pop-up flash. There is no flash over here. It, this does not flip up, you know. So it's it's kind of um, it's just aesthetic quality. That's all. Um, if you notice, this camera has a lot of dials. Everything is dial based. So there's your exposure compensation right here, your ISO right under it. Both these dials have their individual locks. You can see over here. Then. This is the exposure dial over here, you can see, and then oddly enough, a mode dial. Now, the first problem we had when we uh, got to use this camera was that all these dials spin the way dials are supposed to spin. You know, you just kind of do this and you're good. And that's all you need to do. Of course, you have to press this lock button in case the dials lock. So there is that. Um, these locks actually don't prevent the dial from spinning out of control by the way so if you accidentally rub up against them they're, they're still gonna move so the locks kind of don't make sense on this but anyway however the mode dial does not spin that way you have to first pick it up and then turn it around so that's kind of annoying um, it's a little counterintuitive too uh, and unless you're somebody who's been shooting with the film variant of this camera back in the 80s or the 70s or whatever um, you know, you probably know about this, but anyway, so there's that. So the dials are a little cumbersome, but you get used to it. We've been shooting for about two weeks, three weeks with this camera, and we've sort of gotten used to, you know, moving the dials around. There is no one-handed operation in this camera. So Nikon DF, um, you know, which stands for Digital Fusion, is the marriage between what Nikon considers to be the best of both the analog and the digital worlds. It has complete digital insights. It's got a 16 megapixel imaging sensor, full frame, right out of the D4. It has an XP4 chip, again, uh, right out of the D4, but probably with different algorithms. The AF system in this camera is from the D610. It's a 39 point AF system. The other problem with the AF system is that the 39 points are not spread far apart. So the coverage area is not that great. It's all kind of cluttered in the center. So that's there. Now, one of the reasons why this camera feels a little confusing is because this is supposed to be analog. And the kit lens that comes with this camera does not have an aperture ring on it. You know, if Nikon really wanted to make this a truly retro feel, if this camera was supposed to have a really, really retro feel, then there should have been an aperture ring on the lens, which there isn't. And But on the other hand, your older F-mount lenses will work on this. So there's that advantage. Um, the second problem we saw was this. Um, this is apparently your aperture dial. This is how you change the aperture, which is, it's a little cumbersome to reach. Um, and we often found our fingers slipping off the dial. So if this was maybe a texture, like if it had a rubber finish, maybe the grip would have been better. But for us, we often find our finger, as you can see, it, you know, it, it doesn't always work, unfortunately. It's just a really, really annoying experience. Now the back looks very much like the modern day digital camera, as you can see. If, if you've used the D610, the D800, uh, you know, you would be familiar with this layout. Um, this doesn't really do anything. If you go into manual mode, you have to change your aperture through that annoying dial I showed you in the front. And your shutter speed is set over here. So this makes no sense. Unless you want to do exposure compensation. So yes, you push the dial and you can turn this. Also, um, the exposures are not in one-third stops. 
in order to get it to one third stop you have to push this little button over here and then use this to fine tune your shutter speed again it's it's sort of confusing why Nikon could not have just made this shutter dial in one third increments either that or shouldn't have given the option and then there's this tiny teeny screen which is more like a formality than anything else now this th that's about the design the, essentially the main aspect about this camera is design that's that's what stands out about this camera but if you look at the imaging performance it is absolutely phenomenal this camera takes amazing photographs there is no two ways about it you put a good lens on it you know how to shoot you will be taking amazing photos however that being said there is no video this camera cannot shoot video because Nikon says this is a photographer's camera a purest photographer's camera so there's no video um, however they're charging you two lakhs for this thing and all it has to boast of is the retro design sure it takes great photos but so does the d610 which is much cheaper so does the d800 which is about 15,000 bucks cheaper you know so why not go for that instead why go with this the only reason you would want to go for this is if you're absolutely filthy rich and have the need to own everything retro so yes this this will fit for you but if you're a smart photographer you would rather spend your money in a body that gives you far more perform in terms of performance in terms of features uh, and not just looks so yeah we're not very happy with the Nikon DF mostly because it's got a really weird aesthetic sense and uh, the price is just you know the nail in the coffin it's 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 overpriced it's simply put it's just overpriced there is there is no justifying that price um, so yeah unfortunately um, you know not a lot of good things were said about this camera but don't let that take away from the fact that it does shoot amazing images as a device of taking photos this is amazing and if you had to ask us what we'd probably pay for this about half what Nikon's asking at best so yeah that there you have it our rather interesting review of the Nikon DF thank you